Greetings everyone, Brett here with Hammerhead Model Making, and on this episode we're going to be taking a look at the special hobby P40F Warhawk in 172nd scale. This is my first special hobby kit, and I've kind of grown a little bit of a liking for these, you know, limited run type kits after building a couple of sword kits and seeing that companies like sword, like special hobby offer aircraft that you just don't normally find from mainstream manufacturers. And one of the aircraft that I think is criminally underrepresented in scale modeling is the P 40 F. Now, if you're not familiar with the F model, it is the, um, P40 experiment to put a Merlin engine instead of a um, Allison engine in the aircraft. So you'll notice that the nose profile of the F is a little bit different than other P40s. For example, you don't have the air scoop on the very top and the radiator profile is much different. And there's, there's radiator details that are different. And I... I really like the profile of the P40F. I really like the profile of the Merlin engine P40s. And so this one was one that I was kind of just looking forward to being able to build and get done. I, I built this one back during um, November, December of 2023. And I was, I was building this one at the same time I was building a couple of other kits. And I really just wanted to do a quick out of box build just to kind of see what the special hobby experience was like. If you're not familiar with limited run kits, uh, the basically the the gist is, I mean, it, it is injected molded plastic um, and it goes together like pretty much every other kit, but there are certain concessions they've made to being able to make, make it limited run. So you don't have like locating pins on the fuselage halves. You can see the ejector pins that are quite large. Um, generally fit, you really have to, um, do a lot of dry fitting and, you know, slight sanding and adjusting to the parts to get them to fit correctly. Um, and so just be aware of that when doing a kit like this, I, I would definitely say that these kits are not designed for beginners, but if you've had a few kits under your belt and you're looking for a challenge, this is definitely something that I could recommend. Um, or if you've had <clears throat> experience with limited run kits in the past, definitely, definitely check it out. The kit does come with a decent photo etch fret, including uh, seat belts for the seat, details for the radiator area, as well as some other details like the instrument panel and some other things. Uh, oh, as well as <clears throat> details for the drop tank, which you'll see later on in the video. That said, the I, I just I, I kind of started this kit with the mindset that you know I just I just wanted to see what it was going to be like and to that end I, there are actually a few mistakes I make on this kit and some of them were more like conscious things that I chose to do and some of them were stuff that I completely missed until after the fact but I'll try and point those out as as they come up but you can see here the photo etch going down on the seat the uh the seat belts are really nice, and they do help add a lot of detail to the cockpit, which is <clears throat> rather um, simple. Uh, That's probably the best word I can describe it. Um, not that you'll necessarily see a lot. the The kit is designed to have a closed canopy, even though the the main like the sliding canopy is a separate part. There's real, there's no way to actually have it in the open position because the the clear part's just too thick and it won't fit over the fuselage section behind the cockpit. So unless you want to go and find like a aftermarket vacuform canopy, you really kind of have to build this one uh, with a closed cockpit. So you're not going to see a lot of the detail anyways, but just be aware that those are, that's what's presented in the kit. So I've gone ahead, gone ahead and given everything a nice coat of black primer for all of our interior parts. And now we're going to go ahead and get our interior green spray painted or painted on. This is the ammo MIG paint. And I have found that once you figure out the ratios you need to spray ammo MIG paint and just, and how it sprays, I find them to be a really good acrylic paint. Uh, they do take a little bit of finesse to try and get them. And I've, and I've had people say like, I've tried, I've tried, and I just cannot figure them out. And I get that because I'm the same way with like AK acrylics. I just cannot figure them out. But with Ammo MIG, I found that if you thin them about 
with about 15, 20 percent uh, Tamiya X20A thinner. They spray really nice. They do require you to do like two or three coats to really build up the the full opacity of the color. Otherwise, if if you try and flood the um, if you try and flood the paint like onto the surface in one coat, it's not going to work out well for you. So it it does require a couple of thin coats, but once you've i think once you've kind of learned that and you've and you can you get a feel for it i think generally people will like it um and i do like the color choices that mig offers they've got a pretty hefty range so just just my personal preference i know people are going to have preferences of what they do this is this is just what i like uh so at this point we can do a little bit of detail painting here i'm not going to go so super crazy on the detail just because i'm not i know i'm not going to be able to see a lot once the cockpit's all closed up but we're doing do a little bit of dry brushing to pick out some of these details and uh and, and make them pop just a little bit i didn't i wasn't super accurate on on what's getting painted inside i didn't really look at many reference photos again really just trying to 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 work through the kit and just kind of get a feel for the experience but once all the painting's done we're gonna hit everything with a gloss coat so that we can move on to a little bit of a wash and some weathering on the inside here the uh, Alclot aqua gloss is what I'm using here super easy to use gloss coat dries in like five minutes and pretty solid stuff so for the wash I am using the flory dirt uh, the dirt wash and this just gets applied on, applied on liberally. Really, the aim here is to help kind of push the shadows a little bit and make some of those details pop. And uh, at the same time, add a little bit of like grittiness to the to the interior. Just make it look like it's been used a little bit and there's some grime in there. Nothing fancy. Once it dries, you can remove the excess with a damp cotton bud and, uh, you know, so it leaves the wash in the recesses, but removes it off of the upper flat surfaces. You do want to be careful when using a cotton bud around uh, photo etch parts because it's really easy for like a, a sharp little corner of the photo etch to catch a thread of the cotton bud. And you can either rip off your photo etch or leave some cotton hairs around. So that's why I switched to a brush there. But in general, this is pretty simple stuff to do. So once the wash is done, we can go ahead and get everything a matte coat. And that'll get us prepped for moving on. If you did want to continue detailing it, you could do a little bit more detail painting here. Add a little bit of like dust and and maybe some scuff marks and scratches and to the paintwork. But I, I I didn't find that necessary. So at this point now we can start getting things put together and um, start building the aircraft. The doing all of the dry fitting in the earlier stages of the build, especially when like making sure like cockpit alignment is all correct, will really help out here in making the rest of the build go much smoother. The, um, the kind of a theme of limited run kits like this is really just, you got to dry fit, dry fit, dry fit, and constantly be dry fitting and checking alignment and things like that, just so that you don't cause yourself more headache later on. And in this one, it really paid off because the, the fuselage halves went together really nicely. They fit together really well. And when it came to like sanding and filling the seams, I mean, it was, it was a breeze. I don't think I had to use any filler on this. It was mainly just a, a matter of getting the seams sanded down and blended in and polished up and, and it was good to go. So that was, that was kind of a nice little refreshing uh, boost in the kit. The underside of the wing fits really well as also. Uh, no issues there. Again, cleanup was really easy to, to get like the seams cleaned up and filled where they needed to be. The upper halves of the wings were, they didn't fit great, but not terrible. Uh, you know, basically around the outside perimeter of the wing, everything lined up correctly. It was just the, that wing root gap, um, was f fairly substantial for the scale and it, it did require a little bit of plastic putty to fill in there and, and get that uh, closed up. The horizontal stabilizers on the other hand these did not fit at all and required um, to open up the the locating hole in order to actually fit the stabilizers in on, and this is on both sides so 
just be aware that you will need to do a little bit of work there to get those to fit. Put the drop tank together. The actual drop tank itself is plastic, but everything else that attaches to it and, and allows it to attach to the aircraft is all photo etched. So just be aware there are no plastic parts here for attaching the drop tank. So if you're not very familiar with working with photo etch, you may try avoid putting on the drop tank. But if you're set on the drop tank, just be aware that you do have to add photo etch. And it's a lot of really fiddly little parts. But I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely doable. So uh, I would recommend at least giving it a try. And uh, I yeah, definitely would. I mean, in the end, it looks really great because the photo etch is great for like the scale effect. And it looks really cool with all the sway braces and everything. But it does require just a little bit of work here. So here we're just adding some small photo etch pieces that will help attach the sway braces to the drop tank. These were a little tricky to get aligned and I'm just putting them onto little dabs of super glue here. And it might look a little messy. And I do go through, eventually go through and clean it up a little bit with some super glue debonder, but because this was gonna be sitting under the aircraft, I wasn't terribly worried about tiny little um, glue spots. Just, you're never gonna see them. And, and because we're zoomed in here, like they seem a little bit bigger than they actually are in, in reality. But here are the sway braces. The, the, uh, they get folded a couple times and then attached and very delicate. And again, we're just using super glue here, just using some of this, this thicker CA glue. I find that it's better for attaching these small parts and, and not as runny and gets everywhere. I'm terrible with runny super glue, but pretty straightforward. Tail wheel goes in. Not a lot of detail here. Uh, landing gear going on. I kind of decided since everything under the, on, on the underside is all going to be um, painted the same color, including the landing gear struts, I just decided to go ahead and attach them now. Uh, and just so I could paint it all in one go, not have to worry about painting all the separate parts. And uh, just make it easier. So for the gun barrels, I wanted to drill them out, but sometimes just trying to get your, you know, drill bit aligned on a tiny little piece of plastic like that can be kind of difficult. So I'm just using this scribing tool to punch a center hole, which helps guide the drill bit and getting those drilled out. And yeah, pretty simple, straightforward, getting the exhaust put in, um, Again, this is just one of those things that I, I probably could have left it off and painted it separately, but at this scale, it's it's really not difficult to get it to leave it on there and just paint it later down the road. So attaching the drop tank, we're using a generous amount of super glue on the shackle to get that attached to the center line, and then we can bend the sway braces into position and get those glued down as well and get that attached. Now, this is one of the areas where I, I do have a bit of a mess up. And it's interesting because I didn't actually catch it at the time. So getting the front windscreen installed, I didn't realize it, but there's actually a fairly substantial like uh, step between the fuselage and the front of the windscreen. And for whatever reason, I just, I didn't catch it. And I, I don't know if it's one of those, like you can't see the trees through the forest kind of a deal, but I just, I didn't catch it until after the build was complete. So you, you'll see it later on what, what I'm talking about. But here I'm just pre-painting the insides of these back uh, window areas. And I'm painting them the fuselage color. Now, I had some people tell me that they should be painted the interior green color, like the rest of the cockpit. And I, I've seen reference pictures of P-40s where that's the case. But I've also seen some pictures of desert P-40s where this portion of it was painted the fuselage color and so I just kind of made the decision that that's how I wanted it to look I wanted it to look like they were painted the fuselage color to me that's it was a, a better aesthetic look maybe not necessarily strictly accurate but from some of the reference pictures I saw it was definitely possible so at this point we can move on to the main painting portion of the build. So first off, I'm just going to get the interior frames painted, interior color, and then we're going to move on. I primed the whole thing in a gray primer, which is not my normal black primer, but my reasoning behind this was because I wanted to get a nice, I wanted to have a nice light base to paint the sand color over and get a good solid, um, you know, opacity on here that 
would have been a little bit more difficult with a black with a black color. And, and the reason behind this is basically just basically because I wanted to do all of my weathering and fading as post effects as opposed to like pre shading and like mottling underneath the main color. So that's why I chose the gray instead of a black base. It just helped me get a good, nice, solid color on that sand color. Painting the spinner here, the uh, because the aircraft is overall just a sand color with a gray underside, the red spinner adds a great little like pop of color to the aircraft. And because the the paint scheme on this one and the marking scheme is relatively simple, there's not a lot going on with it. So it was nice to have that little pop of color. Now for the underside, I didn't have a proper like neutral gray color, so I substituted this aggressor gray. And in the in the end, I probably should have picked a slightly lighter gray. This ended up a little bit darker than I really wanted, but again, it's something that I can live with. It's like it's not a huge deal breaker for me. And uh, it uh, it works out in the end, but just be aware that this is probably a little bit darker than it should be. Even though neutral gray can be fairly dark sometimes, against the, the really light tan color, I think it just makes it look even darker. So with all the main painting done, we can move on to a gloss coat. <clears throat> so this is going to help protect all of our paintwork and create a good foundation for decals and a wash. The um, the gloss coat ended up going down a little heavy, and I'm not quite sure why I felt like it did because I, I don't really feel like I did anything different in terms of like thinning the, the gloss coat or applying the gloss coat from other projects, but it just felt like it went down a little too heavy. And that kind of bites me later on, and I'll, and I'll show you what I mean later. But at this point, we can add the decals, and I really love the early, you know, really early war U.S. Army decals. I, I like how it has the big U.S. Army written on the underside of the aircraft. For me, it just looks, it, it's just a cool look to me. And um, so I like it like on the, like the Pearl Harbor P-40s, the early B-25s, things like that. I think it looks cool. The, the P-400 that I built a little while ago uh, say had the same thing. Really like the look. The uh, Special Hobby decals performed really well for me. I didn't have any issues with them. They're very thin and so didn't really need a lot of setting solution to get them to stick down and conform to the details. Um, so I had no problem with them. I have heard other people have had problems with them, like ripping and pulling off, but I didn't, I didn't notice any particular issue there. I, I did I do notice as I'm recording this and like reviewing the footage that the the stars on the wings look really small and and I don't remember noticing that as I was putting them on but <laughs> looking at the footage now they feel small for some reason I'm not sure why the uh, the nose detail decal going on really like that look and it's kind of a neat little emblem with the the crossed lines on it kind of unique. So moving on to weathering. So I, I gave everything another coat of gloss just to seal in our decals and protect them. And now we're gonna do another flurry wash here. And and this is kind of where the over thickness of the gloss coat kind of caused me problems. And I think it's also in conjunction with the fact that the recessed panel lines on the kit are really shallow. And so some of the panel lines just would not accept a wash they were just it was just too shallow and then I think on top of that having the thick gloss coat on just made it so that it was really hard to keep a, a wash in those panel lines so you can see here as I'm, as I'm removing the wash that a lot of the wash comes out of those panel lines especially around like the access the ammunition access for the machine guns and stuff eventually I do go back and try to um, do more of a pin wash in those panel lines to really try and at least keep a little bit in there and I'm kind of successful but not a hundred percent so just be aware i think if i were to do this kit again i would definitely try and deepen some of those panel lines the fuselage panel lines seemed to be pretty good it was mainly just on the wings where they felt really shallow and or i just went really heavy-handed with the gloss coat could be a combination of both i'm not sure but with the wash on is now when you can see there's a big dark line underneath the front of the canopy <clears throat> where I should have put in some filler, but for whatever reason, just didn't catch it in the moment. And uh, so you'll you'll see that a little bit later on in the footage. But at this point, getting the spinner all put together and the propeller, pretty pretty straightforward. At this, and now we can add on our matte coat to seal in the 
uh, panel wash and our decals and prep for further weathering. I do like the, uh, I mean, the kit actually has pretty decent detail in terms of panel wa- or the panel lines and like fasteners and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it, it's not like full on rivet detail, but f- considering the size and, you know, the age of the kit, it's actually, it's actually really nice decals on the propellers and we can get the propeller hub attached at this point. So again, I just, I love the little splash of color that the, the spinner adds. And uh, now we can remove masking. So at this point I'm done <clears throat> spraying, you know, coats on the aircraft so we can remove the masking. I always like to remove the masking as soon as possible. The, the, the least amount of time I can keep tape on the clear parts, the better. I, I've, I've made the mistake of leaving masking on clear parts for a while and it leaves residue and you, it's just a pain that you have to clean up. Uh, getting the main canopy installed. And now we're going to start doing some chipping. So just using a little bit of silver paint here going around the chipping. It's going to be a little heavy handed. I'm using a, quite a large brush here. But uh, again, this was kind of a conscious choice to do. I, I really wanted to almost exaggerate the weathering on this and, and to kind of just play around with how strong I could make weathering on such a light colored aircraft like this. So here I've gone through and done all the chipping across the aircraft, really trying to concentrate on places where it made sense, the access panels on top of the wing where the crew would be walking around, things like that. And now we can move on to do some oil weathering. So I've got my little cardboard palette here with my typical color. So I've got black, umber, or uh, yeah, umber and white. Uh, if you've seen my other videos on when I do oil weathering, this is going to be really familiar. But the gist of it is I flood a certain area with uh, white spirit, and then I start dabbing on the oil paint. So I'm just applying this straight from the palette onto the model, concentrating around panel lines, areas where dirt and grime would accumulate, and just kind of working in sections at a time. There's really no rhyme or reason to how big of a section I do. It just depends on how much I'm, how much weathering I'm adding, and you know how 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 big of an area I want to work with. So for this, I'm just using the wing. Now using a clean brush loaded with thinner, I start blending in the oil paint. So this is gonna help blend in the oil paint with the thinner that's already on the model, as well as adding, introducing more thinner just to help feather out that paint and uh, get that all blended in. And so the really the process here is just kind of a back and forth process of adding paint and blending it, adding paint and blending it. Here, I, I mean, you can see I'm holding two brushes in my hand. That's not an uncommon thing for me to do is to have both brushes in my hand as I'm going through, adding a little bit of paint, blending it, adding a little bit of paint, blending it. Same thing on the underside. We're gonna, I'm, I do go a little bit heavier on the other underside where like oil stains would accumulate, dirt would, would get kicked up from the ground and, and stick to the oil, things like that. Uh, and again, trying to concentrate on areas where it would make sense. Like for example, oil staining is going to have happen along the center line of the aircraft. You're not going to get like random oil stains on the outboard portion of the wing. It just doesn't make sense. So it's trying to concentrate on the areas that, that do make sense here. And once, once the darker colors have dried, then I'll come back in and do lighter colors. So I'm just using some white here on the upper side surfaces of the aircraft, just to kind of represent a little bit of fading. The, my research into this aircraft didn't really say how long this aircraft was in theater. So I, but I'm assuming that even a short amount of time would be enough time for fading to occur on an aircraft like this, especially out in the desert sun. But now I get to do my favorite part. So the reason why I chose this livery over the other really spectacular libraries in the kit was because the instructions specifically called out that this aircraft had heavy exhaust staining. And that's like, that's perfect. Like that's, that's what I look for. And so when, when it specifically calls it out, like I have to do that. And so here I'm just using really diluted black acrylic paint. I mean, this is like 85% thinner and spraying it around 10 PSI, just slowly building up layers and layers until I get the look that I'm going for. It's easy to overdo this and it's easy to mess it up because if you just start flooding this on, it's going to run and it's going to look bad. So patience is, is required here to really like slowly build up the layers, build up the opacity to a point where you are happy. But this was a lot of fun and really kind of just looking forward to this moment throughout the entire build because I love heavy exhaust staining. Um, I've mentioned this in the past 
that I've found very little photographic evidence of like gun stains, like, you know, gun blast stains. And, and so I'm always hesitant to do it because again, like I have, I've found very little reference for it, but at the same time, like it just looks so cool to do it that I always end up doing it anyways. So, um, rule of cool definitely wins out here when it comes to gun stains. I, I do remember seeing a great picture of like a P51 during Korea that had really heavy gun stains, but beyond that, like I just really haven't found many good reference pictures of what it actually looks like. But again, I'll always do it just because I think it looks cool. So now with all the main painting and weathering done, I can move on to do all the final details. So that's going to include attaching the radio antenna here. So adding a little dab of super glue to the wing, a little dab of super glue to the tail, we can stretch this easy line, which is basically like a nylon thread. So it's got some stretch to it and attaching it to the glue. Now it does stick pretty good to the glue. You just got to give it a couple of minutes, like 30 seconds for it to set. And then it's, it's pretty much on there permanently at that point. And then I can add another little glue to the opposite wing, trim the, the line, stretch it out a little bit and get it onto that little dot of glue. And then it's just a matter of waiting for it to set and then slowly releasing it. And there we go. We got our nice radio aerial on there and great little detail. It's even at 172 scale, it can really help uh, make a model look great. Another prominent feature on the P40 is the ring and bead sight they would have kind of as a backup to the, to the uh, gun sight that they, had, they would have inside the cockpit. And fortunately, the kit provides the photo etch for that. And it's a fun little detail and really helps uh, create a sense of scale in such a small little, little airplane. And the final step here is to paint the navigation lights. So I'm just using some clear acrylic Tamiya paints, uh, green and red, obviously to paint the navigation light. So this just goes on over like a silver base, it creates a nice little effect. And with that, build's done. So <clears throat> overall for my first special hobby adventure, uh, I really enjoyed the kit. I really enjoyed the build. I had a lot of fun with this. Painting and weathering was, was a fun experiment. Like I said, I did make a few, you know, mistakes, odd choices, especially with like the underside color, but I think once I started adding the, adding the uh, weathering layers, the underside color kind of really toned down a little bit for me and, and it works better now as a completed model. But as I was building it, I was kind of a little iffy on it. The, uh, the canopy, I definitely try and do the canopy differently next time to get that blended in better so you don't have that big gap underneath. But other than that, I really enjoyed the build. I had a lot of fun with it. I had a lot of fun and a lot of experience or a lot of good learning experience here. And I'm excited to do some of my other special hobby kits that I have. I have a P40K that is a new tool kit from them as well as a uh, an A20 in 72 scale as well. So looking forward to getting, getting those on the bench sometime and uh, trying out more of their kits. So I would recommend this kit to anyone that has had experience doing limited run kits, you know, like sword, other special hobby kits before, you know, or, or have experience doing photo etch in this scale. Definitely would recommend the kit. It was fun. It's a unique aircraft. You don't see many P40 Fs and, uh, yeah, uh, really enjoyed it. So thank you. If you've, uh, if you've made it this far, I appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for helping support this channel and bringing content like this to you. And uh, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you're not already subscribed, I would ask you to consider subscribing. Uh, it helps me out and helps get the, the videos out to a wider audience. And we'll see you on the next video. Cheers.